um, are we so here we have a uh, solar power here with a uh, ubiquitous techno uh, energy so who are you my name is Damon Hess I'm the vice president of sales at ubiquitous energy so what is this how does it work the material that we've developed selectively absorbs the ultraviolet and the infrared it transmits the visual light which gives you a very clear material that is also harvesting solar electricity. Can, we, uh, can you carry this up? Is it fragile? Can you hold it up? Years. That's how long so, the built window has to last. So we need a lot more time. So right here, uh, uh, this is that. transparent. It's like a window. Uh, a little bit shady, right? Uh, little a little bit, bit of tint. A little but, bit of tint. But and most, what does it do? Yeah. most architectural glass has some tint anyway. Yeah, exactly. Uh, very like few yeah. use Okay. Very few yeah. use clear glass. So, uh, how much power would come okay. in from a little uh, uh, power yeah, we do this little bit window like that? On a sunny day, this would generate okay. five watts. Five watts. Five watts. So you could have a whole uh, skyscraper with your technology, and uh, there would be enough power for everything. That's correct. We'd coat the entire building. So, uh, are you doing that yet, or are you just talking? Uh, when are you going to be able to do this? Our first, our first pilot is with Pilkington, a float glass maker in the UK. Uh, we'll have demonstration units with them in the spring, uh, and from there we'll move into pilot installations. And that could be big buildings potentially. Yes, uh, it could be. It should be big buildings. Yes, the entire building should be coated in Clearview Power, the name of the product. That's called Clearview Power. What are we looking at here? These are miniature versions so our of the really recipe. Is you can see there's different of, tints. Okay, this is the, uh, some of them are a blue color, kind of color some are almost completely the clear, and then you have some amber colors, colors and green colors. Kind of so, um, what is the pattern that we see in there? It's like, it looks like something that's usually a solar panel, uh, like the, the, arrays of them or something? There, there is a pattern of 12 cells around the outside. Each of them can be tested separately. So when we run through a plate, we have 25 tiles, each with 12 cells. So we're actually testing 300 devices every time we produce one of these. That allows us to get to higher efficiencies and higher yields more quickly through a combinatorial approach. So, what's the what's the performance uh, compared to like uh, the most powerful uh, solar cells? It's about a third today. A third. The theory, uh, we've been certified at five and a half percent efficient. On a rooftop today, you probably have between 15 and 20 percent efficiency. So a third, that's like, um, and now people can look through it, that's a big deal. That is a big deal. Today on a building, you have the rooftop to generate solar electricity, but the rooftop is only a small part of the surface area on a building. We'll be able to coat all of the windows, not only generating electricity, but also removing heat from the non-visible light. Is this good for cars? Uh, it looks like it's a phone. Is it going to be on a phone? What is it? it could be on consumer electronics. Uh, it could certainly be an automotive glass, uh, providing the same energy efficiency as well as power production <laughs> capabilities. Have you been talking with the, the solar car uh, uh, world champions? Maybe they uh, can use them on the windows. <laughs> Many of the automotive uh, companies have contacted us about including this in the windows so that they're providing power to functions in the car when the car is off. So it's not only extending the, the range of the vehicle. And you say it's your recipe. So what is that, what is that recipe? How does it work? The recipe has uh, a sandwich of transparent conductive electrodes and an active material in between. So that active material is where you find your PN junction that converts your photons into electrons. Those are driven to the anode and cathode, which are then routed to the edges where you have a bus bar in the frame that then is connected back into the electrical system. So uh, all this hopefully is affordable, right? Correct. How is, it, how is it affordable? Today the coating is similar in cost to the low E or solar control films that window companies are already putting on their glass to make them more energy efficient. So they put some filters right now, but you actually generate power. You don't just filter. Correct. Instead of reflecting the UV in the IR, we're absorbing <laughs> it, converting it, uh, and thereby removing the heat from that stream as well. So basically it's a no-brainer, right? Well, uh, the idea is absolutely a no-brainer. Uh, it'll come in the implementation in these different application areas where we'll need the help of partners in order to get it onto the mass production scale. 
So Ubiquitous Energy, where are you based? Redwood City, just about 30 minutes from here. And uh, so how long have you been doing this? The technology originally started at Massachusetts Institute of Technology. The company was formed in 2011. Uh, we moved out to Redwood City in 2014. And uh, how, how much is this is out there yet? Is this something that's still to come? We're just in the application development stage now. Uh, the first demonstration units will be available in the spring. Which is very soon. Which is but, very but soon. But that's demonstration. The demonstration, from the demonstration unit, we then go to pilot, and then from pilot, we'll go into mass production. And so, if somebody comes with a big pile of money, it can go happen sooner, faster? How does it work? Certainly, the more money uh, that we have to invest, the more resources we can apply to projects, and that always has a positive effect on development time. Is there a need for a huge multi-billion dollar factory to make it in mass production, or? It won't be a separate manufacturing process from the existing glass manufacturing today. It'll be a modification of tools they're already using to deposit coatings onto glass. And the, the kind of like structure that you see in the window, does it have to be like that? Or is it there a way that you can just have it like a flat, uh, the whole window, you don't even see uh, something in there? Yeah, the lines that you see in this particular device are, are individual cells, and that helps us uh, dictate what the output voltage will be. In the next iteration of our equipment, we'll move to a laser pattern so you won't see the lines at all. Here is an example of that construction. Probably cannot see lines in there, even though they're similarly constructed to this device here. Nice. So how did this uh, happen at the MIT? Yeah, we originally were looking for disposable solar. Uh, we came upon recipes that allowed us to deliver transparent solar, and the market for transparent solar seemed bigger, so that's what we used to commercialize. So there's transparent solar is going to be huge, right? And uh, I'd like to see all the roads be uh, solar charging everything, you know, like change the material in the road, because there's a lot of potential there, I guess. Uh, there is, for, certainly for thin film, but if it doesn't have to be transparent, it's probably not going to be our technology. Yeah. It would be a similar th thin film technology, though. And uh, But you will be in all the buildings and everything transparent? That's the plan. All right.